first of all, Happy New Year. And I want to say thank you to the 25 to 35, the 20 to 30 percent of you who get it for you who support the channels to the people who bought courses, to the people who are about to buy courses, to the people who are part of the nerd tribe. I really appreciate you guys. Now, there are many of you who've posted in the comments that until I mention Andrew Tate, you've never heard of this guy. And that's the point I'm talking about because recently I've been recognized in public six, seven times in the last few weeks. And it's always been by respectful, decent men. One guy, he was with his family. It was at a restaurant, married man with his three kids. I think he was from South Carolina. And there is a group of people that 25 to 30 percent who rock with me, who enjoy the content. So I'm not going to kill the channel. But I am starting over because part of the posting of the Andrew Tate stuff was part of an experiment just to see. Because once again, I, I have been looking at this. I've been looking at this for months. And the fact that I had diehard supporters and people who ardently defended Andrew Tate and literally be like, hey, I've been rocking with Andrew Tate since 2018. And, you know, th this is what's funny. When you go to Google and you put in Andrew Tate vlogs, you can't find anything. So let's say this stuff existed. There was proof of the 33 cars and all this other stuff. I want to say this as distinctly and clearly as I can. If you resonate with the sentiments of an Andrew Tate, you should not resonate with the sentiments of a Glendon Cameron. Uh, the credit plug made a great post. He says, I get so much pushback when I talk about having the integrity. Now, here's the thing. I, there was one comment. The reason that we rock with Andrew Tate is because of his anti-establishment rhetoric. All right, let's, let's talk about that. I've got videos on this channel talking about how to get around child support. I have videos talking about illegal, illegal, actually breaking the law. And once again, let me go ahead and give you the proper framework. First of all, you must know what the law is so you can get close to the line as possible without crossing it. I had a retail operation running out of a warehouse in my lease agreement. I wasn't supposed to do that. And this is what I'm talking about. So this whole thing about me, you know, I've got videos talking about I spank chicks. This whole thing of you're the establishment is ludicrous. I'm not the establishment. And then I heard many people talking about. Andrew Tate wants men to be better. All right. This is where I started to lose my mind. Disruptive male. What's the first mandate of disruptive male? Get your economics together. Get your body together. Get your mind together. Fourth mandate, date submissive women. That was 2017. And interestingly enough, the last video that I put up was age restricted because I used Andrew Tate's name and I used fucking. So it was age restricted. So that video is not going to get a lot of views. And, you know, this whole thing that YouTube is part of the matrix, YouTube and TikTok are the only social media sites that have organic reach. Literally anyone can come and blow up on YouTube. And, you know, let me go ahead and tell you what my plans are. Um, the content's changing up. Now, one of the things that happened after last October, uh, October before last, when I posted that video, I got a whole bunch of traffic 
and my video views went up to 10, 20, 30,000. You know, and it was growing. But once again, who did I get? Let's go ahead and walk through the process. We had a ton of black content creators making videos about me, <laughs> similar to Andrew Tate's exposure. You know, Andrew Tate had way more people reposting his content, making videos about him. But it was a similar effect, and I got a boost. I got a boost. Uh, January of this year, this channel made $14,000 in AdSense. That's the most money this channel's ever made, and it was coming off of that trend. And over this year, that group of people, once again, look at the source, these people were watching Anton Daniels, the lead attorney, um, Abba and Preach, um, who else, who else, who else? They were watching a lot of garbage content. Garbage in, garbage out. So it didn't last. It, di it didn't last. Because, you know, at one point I was like, hey, you know, we're growing. We're making more money. We're getting, you know. But that attention and exposure brought me a much larger audience, but it brought me the wrong audience. Going back to what the credit plug said, when he talks about integrity, I have literally had fights with people in the comments about doing the right thing. And this whole anti-establishment, let me go ahead and tell you why you are not winning in America. There's this notion that there's a room of powerful, wealthy people who are deciding to keep you poor. Let me explain to you why you're poor. Number one, number one reason for people being poor, having children young and not being married. Number two, atrocious money management habits. Number three, not getting an education. And when I say not getting an education, I'm not talking about college. You can go to trade school. You can go to trade school and be in trade school for a year or two and come out and be making six figures. So, there is no accountability. There's this whole rhetoric. This is something that Kanye West talks about. Andrew Tate talks about. Trump talks about the us against them. And frankly, I don't want you as an audience member. If you're listening to Trump, Kanye or Andrew, because all of them are bullshit artists. Now, Andrew Tate, let me go ahead and break this down. I went ahead and researched. I did Andrew Tate 2016, 17, 18. It didn't really look like Andrew Tate was starting to get money, real money, into 2021. Now, maybe he had the cam model business, whatever. And also, here's something else that I saw. Um, there's reports of him owning a casino. So, Webcam girls, casinos, that's very closely aligned to mob activity. Now, I'm not saying that he's aligned with the mafia, the mob, but you keep looking at it. And I, I saw a clip where he said he had been in jail. And this is one of the things that I have noticed about Andrew Tate. He talks about a lot of stuff, but he doesn't go into the details like, hey, I got arrested for this. I was in jail. He doesn't do that. He talks around that stuff. And that's why I feel he's a bullshit artist. And once again, he's talking to the lowbrow crowd because I'm, I'm going to say something. Once again, shout outs to my 25 to 30% of intelligent, progressive black folks. The rest of you are complete dumbasses. I mean, you know, let me go ahead and say this. I am not impressed with the Omnis and the Hellcats and the Andrew Tates because they have a lot of cars. I'm going to tell you from an experience of someone who literally owned not supercars, not exotic cars, but at one point 
I owned 34 cars at one time. It was a pain in the ass. And on a personal level, most of those cars were for the rental car business. But on a personal level, I had three cars and only drove two. So for me, now there are people out there who love cars and they're car collectors and they will deal with the hassle of owning multiple cars. Because one big hassle is if you don't drive these cars, the batteries are going to die. And out of your 30 something cars, there's going to be a few cars that are literally going to be your favorite. And that's going to be the ones you drive the most. And the rest are just going to kind of sit. So unless you have a massive garage and a bunch of trickle chargers to keep the batteries from going dead, it's, it's a hassle. And it's very, very expensive to have that many cars. When I had that many cars, my insurance was like close to $4,000 per month for all of those cars, which is almost $50,000 a year for car insurance to have those cars. And these were not exotics or supercars. These were just regular cars. So I am not impressed because I am not a fan of hero worship. I remember 2017, I was at the gas station and this guy drove up with this aqua blue. I don't know what it's called. This aqua blue Porsche 911. And I thought that was the most beautiful car I ever saw. And at that moment, I made in my mind the decision that I was going to get a Porsche 2016. Now, did I get a Porsche in 2016? No. Did I get one in 2017? No. 2018? No. 2019? No. What I did is. I increased my business to make more money so I can pay cash for the Porsche. That's what I did. And let's talk about that. One of the reasons that the 70% of the haters, the low intellect people hate me is because I preach that through hard work, in effort, you can be successful in America. And they don't like that message because, frankly, they don't want to do the work. And shout out to all of the people who've been following me for years. And every time I see one of these comments, it makes my heart beat faster. Hey, Glendon, I've been listening to you. And now I'm in the second year of my business and the third year of my business. And many of the things that you said are coming through. We're starting to be more successful, we're getting more customers. When I see those type of comments, I'm like, yeah, that's those are my people. Because let me go ahead and explain something to your stupid ass. You're not going to get appreciably rich in a few weeks or a few months. And this this is one of the things. So going back to the credit plug and the credit plug has said, you know, in the comments that when he talks about no credit check, credit, that's when he gets the views. And when he puts up a, vi a video that's talking about the things that you statistically have to do to get credit, um, people don't want to hear that because this is my opinion. I feel that many black folks on a subconscious level don't think they're shit. And since they don't think they're shit, they don't think any other black person is shit. These people have low self-esteem, have mental issues, bad family history. And it shows it shows because there's the Internet world and there's the real world. And the other day I went out and I was asking people, a lot of people, I was like, Andrew, Tate. they didn't, know, they didn't, know, they didn't even know who Andrew Tate was. And I'm going to tell you why. There's a group of people who live in the real world and they use the Internet. They don't live on the Internet. And the 70 percent of the losers, malcontents, worthless people, they live on the Internet. They live in these echo chambers of toxic masculinity. Now, this, this is where. Like I said, I, I didn't really consume a lot of Andrew Tate's content, but lately I have seen some stuff. We as men do not own women. That's on record. He said that. I know that for a fact. And 
a lot of the stuff that he is saying in regards to women is very, very bad. Now, working hard, going to the gym, doing that type of stuff. He said that I agree with that. But this whole notion that we as black people cannot be successful in America because we're black. Now, I will go ahead and clear up my I'm going to explain to you what I assume is happening with YouTube, because I've been on YouTube since 2009. And it used to be, and I wish they would return to this, YouTube would push out your video content to your subscribers. They stopped doing that. They, they created this algorithm. And my thoughts are, because this algorithm wasn't created by black people. It was created by white men, Asian men, and Indian men. And this algorithm has an inherent bias because I started noticing that I started getting pushed a lot of black content and a lot, you know, some of it was good, but a lot of it was bullshit. And I was just sitting there like, why is YouTube recommending this shit to me? And it hit me because you're black, you know, and I will state if you're a black content creator and YouTube's doing that, you're getting screwed because Black people only make up 14% of the population. And this is the reason for my, because once I realized what's going on that year, that I made 3 million. If my reach had extended into the totality of YouTube, I could have made 20 million that year. Let me say that again. If I could have, you know, and knowing what I know now, I am very appreciative that I made that kind of money with the audience that I have. And that it's that 25 to 30 percent that was driving that. If my content like the Economic Ninja, I allegedly if I was getting the reach of those guys, I would be making two or three million a month. But because of the racist YouTube algorithm, it's racist because this is what I'm seeing with my uh, new channel, which is only a month old. Uh, I posted my phone number on there. I've gotten people. I only have like 160 subscribers. And I've gotten a lot of people calling and uh, it's, it's a different group. I feel that that channel, when it reaches 10,000 subscribers, will make me more money than this one. Because let, let me kind of go into my thought process of why I was thinking about starting over. If I start over with the right audience, I can make way more money because look, look, one of the things subscribers do not make you money. Views make you money. There are people with between 10, there, there's one guy, new channel, 15,000 subscribers. He gets 3 million views a month. Uh, there's a guy in the credit card space. He gets 50,000. He's got 50,000 subscribers. He quit his job because he makes $16,000 a month from YouTube with 50,000 subscribers. Let me say this again. My best month with me, and this is the thing, he doesn't post every day. He posts twice a week, twice a week. And for me to make the same kind of money, because we're in the same space and we have the same CPM, I literally have to post every day on not one, but two channels. And this guy can make more money posting two videos a week. It's eight videos a month. And I've got to post 50 to 60 videos a month on two channels to make the same money. You want to know why? Because I'm not getting the reach that he's getting. And, you know, and that, that's one of the things that just pissed me off because when I realized that, I was like, fuck. 
So I don't think this is part of the matrix. I feel that it's this way because the tech space is 99% white. We don't have black programmers. We've got some, but we don't have enough. And that's one of the reasons that I feel because here's again, a white and once again, a white program is going to put his embedded biases into his code. So I don't think this is part of, quote, the matrix. The, this whole thing of the matrix, that there's a group of people sitting around controlling your future versus you making poor decisions for your life. See, very few people want to be 100 percent accountable in that video that I put up when I used to be like you. That video should have went viral. But because, number one, the audience I have, number two, the YouTube algorithm, it only had a limited reach. It got like six thousand views. That video should have had widespread appeal because guess what? There are more poor, broke white people than there are black folks. You want to know why? Because there's more of them. There's 230 million of them. There's only 41 million black folks. So there are there are more poor, broke white women than there are all of black people. So that video should have resonated. But because I'm caught up in this this trap of we're just going to recommend your content to black folks and the largest segment of the black population is the broken disenfranchised. Uh, we do have a growing progressive segment of black folks who are making money, who are doing well, who are living the lives they want to live. And that's growing. Thank that, thankfully, it's growing every year. However, the largest segment of the black population is the broke, disenchanted, hip hop, ghetto loving segment of black folks. And I already knew because if you can see the content has changed and my views have gone way down because I knew this was going to happen because of what I'm dealing with. So what what are my plans here? I'm going to still post on these channels. It's just not like, honestly, I'm tired of posting every day. It's just like, all right, every day I got to think of a topic. And if it's, you know, and lately, um, last 10 videos that when I used to be like, you, I think that was a one of one. But honestly, I'm just sick and tired of posting every day. And, you know, it pisses me off. That a white content creator can post eight videos a month and make more money than me posting every fucking day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I may take a break, I may take a three or four month break and let the channel reset. Um, I haven't quite figured that out, but I'm not going to completely disappear, but the amount of content that I'm going to produce is going to go way down. It's going to go way down. And then um, I'm going to focus on. I am going to here. Here's my overall plan. I'm going to keep the channels I have. I'm going to continue to post content on it. I'm going to bring back the disruptive mail. And I'm just going to post maybe two or three times a week, maybe. Don't know, haven't really decided that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create these new channels because I've already seen what is happening with my one new channel, which is one month old. And I'll give you an example. I have uh, the corporate game and I, I've not been posting a lot on that channel and I get 1500 views a day uh, or every two days on that channel and the new channel which only had 160 subscribers because I, I got to post some more videos on that I'll probably do that tomorrow at one point it had 750 views with way less video because this is the thing people were watching video after video And one of the things I am doing on the new channel so I can get it monetized is I am posting every day. 
And that's what I'm going to do. And probably once I get this channel monetized, I'm going to start another channel and do the same thing. I'm going to have a very strategic approach, but I'm not going anywhere because, you know, that that 25, 30 percent. I got love for you guys. I really appreciate you guys. I'm very thankful to you guys. And we would just have to, you know, because the last video, once again, I saw a lot of good comments. I saw a lot of stuff that's like I never heard of this guy because the progressive black people. Number one, progressive black men are still getting married. And this is the antithesis of the manosphere. Don't get married. Don't move in with a girl. Don't have a girlfriend. Be a player for life. Player for life. All right. My late, the late, great Alan Roger Curry. Um, he realized that, you know, he got married. Unfortunately, he got married just two years before he died. But... He realized that having a family is a good thing. And this is one of the things that, once again, I have not consumed Andrew Tate's content. I don't know what his whole views on family and all this other stuff. But it is the natural order of things to have a family. It's normal. It's natural. It's human nature. And the manosphere at large pretty much preaches against that. Preaches against that. Uh, I had someone that posted um, your bank account. His bank accounts got frozen because of child support. All right. Let me explain to you how it works. First of all, before they can get to your bank account, there must be a hearing. That's a court ordered uh, procedure. They just cannot. Your, your baby's mama just can't freeze your bank account. She can't do that. So this is how it works. She goes to court. She puts in a petition and then they reach out to you. If they can't find you, her petition goes forward. And because she has your Social Security number, they're able to locate your bank account. And if what you have in your bank account is not enough to cover the court ordered back payment. They go and they don't really freeze your account. They take your money. They put a hold on your account and with 25 days, they take your money. So they don't freeze your, it's a garnishment. So if anyone's talking about like this woman accused me of being the baby's father and she hit me up, um, now, I will say, you know, from my child support video days that this was a this was a scam, like a woman will go ahead and claim that this dude is the father and she has his Social Security number. He could be screwed. He could be screwed because this whole administrative process rolls forward as if the man is the father without any proof. So she goes to court and she says, uh, Leroy Jones is my baby's father. Leroy Jones, Social Security. How does she get your Social Security number? If you sign the birth certificate, she's going to have your Social Security number. Yeah. So if the woman has a child and she doesn't have your Social Security number and she just has your name, it gets a little bit more challenging. But you can, as a man, be screwed if a woman has your social security number, sign the birth certificate and files a child support order against you and you don't show up to court. Now, we're going to go way, way back in 2014. I had someone come after me for child support because I knew the law. I fought it and won and got my child support case dismissed. 2014. So I already know that you can, as a man, be screwed with child support. I already know this. However, if you're not handling your business, like if you get some something from the court or you get served and you don't go to court, you've just signed your death sentence. They're going to screw you. They're going to they're going to financially rape you. But I already knew what was going on. So I went ahead to the court. I petitioned the court. We had a court hearing. And I was like, look, 
and I provided emails and stuff, and we were supposed to have joint custody. She decided after attacking me to move out of the state. And there's a legal proceeding against her. And the judge threw out her court order. She threw her case out. And my case got dismissed. And then th this, this is how bad it was. Because like I said, I wasn't paying. I wasn't paying. Because that wasn't the agreement. And it even hit my credit report. This whole administrative thing works extremely quickly. Hit my credit report. And it took me threatening them because once i had it dismissed i sent to each credit bureau it was like there is no court order and they need to just take this crap off my credit report because my credit my credit score dropped like 120 points so that's one of the reasons that i made this channel for men is because there isn't a lot of information out here on how to circumvent these things so yeah, so this is my plan going forward. I am going to create the new channels. I am going to, and I, I had people like, hey, just email people who bought your courses. And I was like, I wish I could. I have double agents on my email list. I have people who have signed up for free stuff who are part of that 70%. And if I just send out an email blast saying, hey, here's the new content, guess what's going to happen? They're going to go over there. They're going to subscribe. They're going to reset the YouTube algorithm. It's like, hey, these are the people who like this content. And I'm just going to get more of those fools. I wish I could. And I feel after this channel has been up for maybe a year or two, I can let people know. But once again, it just depends on. How do I build this channel? Because let's say I get this channel to 100,000 subscribers in a year and I get a completely different audience, an influx of five or 6,000 new people from this. That shouldn't, but once again, I don't know. I don't know. Because I could run into the same problems. Because once again, shout outs to the, to the, the 25, 30%. I love you guys, but that's 70%. These losers, these clowns, these complete and other assholes who just come here. And the thing is, they go from channel to channel to hate. They're not constructive because I've been successful. Like, if you notice, I have not shown my new car. I'm going to tell you why. A white content creator can go out and it's like, man, congratulations, Shelly. Congratulations, Biff. Oh, man, that's great. I'm so happy for you. I post it. Oh, you think you some because you, you got a Porsche, huh? I mean, I already know what's going to happen. And I, frankly, I don't even feel like dealing with it. So this is what's going to go on. And also with the training, I am going to reset the training. Now... I've got to announce to the people who are in the intellectual property school that if you're a black content creator, YouTube's going to do this to you. I've got to announce that because I could be I, that year. I could have made 20 million. I, I don't think you really understand how pissed off I am because 20 million in a year. That's enough money to buy an apartment complex outright. And I am being hamstrung because the YouTube algorithm is pretty much directing my content to more black folks. And like, I mean, I watch the Economic Ninja. I allegedly Jeremiah Gabe. I'm like, I am not getting that audience, even though we're talking. I'm talking about the same thing. There's a new content creator I've been watching. He's black. His wife is white and he's doing two videos a day. He's getting like 1.4 million hits. But see, here's the thing. Doing a video a day or two videos a day. That's a grind at some point, because here, here's the thing. What's happening with my new YouTube channel is I'm putting up content and people are watching it longer. On this channel, I put up something and it dies instantly. 
if it's a one of one, it's going to stay one of one for 17 hours. Then it's going to move down to a two. And it's going to move down to a three. I've literally had a video on my new channel that was a one of one and stayed a one of one for four days. Four days. So, you know, I'm going to have to uh, have a conversation with my students about this because, you know, many of them are black and we're going to be talking about how to get around this. We're going to be talking about how to because um, once again, it's about the money for me. It's not about like, you know, um, I like literally I watch the economic ninja and just get pissed off. He could put up a video and he'll have I mean, I watched the Economic Ninja and nothing against the guy, but I'll get pissed off because he'll put up a video and get 30, 40, 50,000 views in less than 24 hours. If he puts up two videos a week, he gets more views than I do posting a video every day. Typically, my videos peter out at about between 2,500 and 6,000 views. So do the math. 10 videos a week is only 25,000 views on the low end. So if he puts out literally one good video, he'll make more money from that one video than I will make posting all week long. And I'm going to be talking about some strategies because right now I'm working on some different strategies. I'm working on some different things like one strategy that I tried. It didn't work. Uh, so, you know, I'm in the lab and I'm going to open up that training because all right. YouTube is even with its flaws, even, you know, this is just part of business. Now that I know what YouTube is doing and I have proof. Now I know a different tactic to go. So I'm going to be talking about strategies to get around this because, guys, when I real like, man, when I realized I could have made $20 million in one year, I was just like, dude. So, like I said, I, there's a whole bunch of people in the economic space, white content creators who would get 20 to 100,000 views per video talking about the same stuff I'm talking about. So it pisses me off, but one of the things that I'm getting ready to do, because th this is just business. You, you, this is just business. You've got to learn. You got to adapt or die. That's pretty much. So I'm going to adapt. I'm going to um, continue. Once again, I'm not going away. Like I said, I may take a three month break to focus on the new channel because fortunately, YouTube has put me in this position where I can work on a project for a year or two and I don't have to make any income. That's one of the reasons, because, you know, a lot of people's like, you know, it's like, don't cut your channel. It's going to kill your online course business. Um, the money management course is my life. I'm sitting on a lot of money. I can all right, I'm be, be frank. I could retire with the money I have in my business bank account, not my personal check, business bank account. I can literally retire and not work or, you know, ever do anything else again in life. So I'm in a position where I can take the time to build something else. So, you know, yeah, you know, if I stop posting on this channel and other channels, yeah, it will kill my online course business. Absolutely. So be it. So be it. Because once again, I am looking at. I go ahead and build a new YouTube channel doing the same thing as selling because uh, there are some things I'm going to do differently. I can make way more money. I know this. I know this. And so we will see. We will see. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. That's what I'm going to do because um, it is interesting how this whole thing works and it's just a learning experience because 
the internet has been the greatest invention of our lifetime. If it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't have made the money I made. And that's why I am not going to go outside of my sphere of competence. Because like I like I said, I will be talking with to my students about this and I'm probably going to put out some more training very soon because this is an issue that if you're a black content creator, you need to be made aware of because I mean, it, it, it's crazy that you got to have the Mr. T starter chain. You got to have the drip. I mean, I understand why black content creators do what they do. You have to, to keep your audience. You have to, if you don't do it, you're not, you just, like I said, when I changed up my content, I knew my views were going to go down. I knew it. And I'm cool with that because I'm in the process of rebuilding and redoing things and setting them up a little differently, a little differently. So that's what's going on. That's what I'm going to do. And it's, it's pretty interesting because uh, now all I'm getting on my YouTube channel, because I've been Googling Andrew Tate, all I'm getting is Tate content. Literally, I'm looking at the shorts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Eight shorts out of 12 are about the Tates. The YouTube algorithm is wicked. It is wicked, man. It is wicked. So we will be re-strategizing and I'm probably going to send out an email today to my students and um, open up this new training because if you are a content creator and you want to make a lot of money, I'm going to say it. You got to get outside of the black spear. Now, you can make a lot of money with the black spear. I'm not going to deny it. You can make a ton of money with a black audience. But if you want to make more money, because when I look at 3 million compared to 20 million, I'm just sitting there like, I mean, three years, 60 million. That is a fancy apartment complex in a major city. Cash. And that, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at that because um, I'm 56 years old and 10 years from now, am I going to do this? I don't know. I don't know. But I want to put myself in the position where I have even more options. Because like I said, if I just manage what I already have, I can live the rest of my life on the money I already made quite easily. But there would be limitations with that. Like I would not be, it, it would cost me like, let's say I retire today and start living off that money. And then 10 years in the future, if I want to buy another Porsche, I would have to think about it because that would be a huge sum of money. Cause 10 years in the future, Porsches are going to be way more expensive. I would have to think about it. But if I go ahead and build out a more robust building, because let, let me tell you one of my goals. One of my goals is to make the amount of money I have in my business checking account in one year. That's one of my goals. And I know if I do the right things, I can. And if I can do that, game changer, game changer. So. That's a goal. I've got a list of written goals. I've got a list of objectives to kick off in 2023. I mean, uh, I'm getting back in the gym. I'm actually sore. I have to go back to the gym tomorrow. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I am really starting to work on. Really, really starting to work on. So we will see what I come up with because let's kind of talk about posting every day. That's 30 video topics a month times two YouTube channels. That's 60 topics. You've got YouTubers who are not putting out 60 videos a year. 
And because they have reach, they make more money than I do from YouTube. And they're not working as hard as I am because, you know, frankly, that's one of the reasons if you know I took a break. That was when I was a little burnt out. I was just like, it's a grind because one of the things that I'm getting ready to do is to start running ads. I'm in the process because I actually tested some ads and they didn't really work. And I already knew that was because one of the things, you know, people just run ads. You've got to test ads first and you figure out what works. And then once it's working, put more money into the ad. So that's where I'm at. So I'm going to be running ads. I'm going to be doing a lot of different stuff, a lot of different stuff this year. So stay tuned. And if you are part of the Nerd Tribe, um, I'm going to be doing some new YouTube training because... If you, you can, you can be successful as a black content creator with a black audience. You can be extremely successful. However, if you come out of the black sphere and your reach gets way bigger, you can be 20 times more successful with a larger, broader audience. And that's the things that I'm going to be working on in 2023. So there may be a link below this video, it just decides what I can put together. But yeah, we're about to get back to it. Okay.